the Miami Township Trustees meeting of December 18th, 2023, our last meeting of the year. I'd like to call this meeting to order and start with the adoption of the minutes from December 4th, 2023. So moved. Um, I'll second. Um, Don, would you? Um, any discussion of these minutes? Any, any additions? Did you guys catch anything? Those just came, so. Yes, I, I didn't. Okay. Because, of, yeah, fresh. because of things, I didn't have yeah, to say it's really okay. If you guys would like to adopt them next week, you can go and look at them. They, um, I, some of the, the only, they look great to me. The only thing is part of your introduction to the public about how the process works, your suggestion of the amendment of of the solar section of the possibility of any any given section to be amended on the um there, there's a lot of detail in there i mean yeah. if you want to i have not read the minutes so let's put it off okay next week but thank you for your hustle um motion uh, so that we withdraw that motion okay um <laughs> to adopt the minutes i withdraw okay um i do Entertain a motion to approve the payment of our bills in, in the amount of $52,217.61. That's general fund, a modest $4,554. Fire fund, also a modest $36,090.76. EMS billing, $458. Cemetery, $3,846.48. Road and bridges, $7,067.76. Can I get a um, a motion to pay our bills? I so move. I'll say. Any discussion? I, I would just like to comment that the fire fund has consistently been lower. And thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> um, Appreciate it. Hey, we both please. Okay, before we go, if we clarify the total amount, please, you wrote something differently than what I show on my agenda. $52,017.61. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills and for the total of $52,017.61. Um, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Richards. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Motion is approved. And I'm going to go through the correspondence, some interesting things. Um, Eric Johnson wrote a letter advocating solar in the township. It was much focused on um, ethanol production is um, corn grown as ethanol and his opinion about that. Kate LeVacant had a public information request and wanted to see the, the template for small solar regulation that served as a starting point for the zoning commission that we mentioned last week in their endeavor to create guidelines for small solar. Laura Curlis wrote a letter to the trustees opposing commercial solar on farmland um, she didn't state what, what, the industri what level, industrial or small scale, but both are commercial sol both could be commercial solar. So, um, MBRPC let us know that they received federal and state funding for the Safe Streets and Roads for All. Deandra at Green County um, Regional Planning and Executive Committee packet, blah, blah, blah. Those two aren't important. Uh, Mike Kelly, I wonder, did he sent us forms for paving and chip seal, and he sent us Excel spreadsheets. At, at we'll talk about them after okay. the roads, if you okay. could. Roads. Got it. Okay. I'm going to put it here before I forget it. All right. Um, Um, Mindy Watts of the Green County Treasury's office it, it sent us, you know, the supplemental to the cert. We got a certificate of res resources, the balance of our funds, and the, the numbers that um, Margaret sent in for, for what we have left to add to that supplement. As I understood that, he, he gives us a, a we certify how much funds we have for next year, mm -hmm. and we put in, we throw in our balances, and he adds them all to that, so we know exactly how much we have. Mm -hmm. Operate next year. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Um, and then we got something from the Deputy Secretary of the Treasury prioritizing unused ARPA funds for affordable housing and workplace development. I thought that was interesting. I put it there. Um, 
let's see, U.S. Deputy Secretary of Treasury, um, Robert Sprague, that Treasurer State of Ohio, reminder to complete our OPS, OPCS something. He wants a uh, notice completed. It's o o Ohio Public. I didn't look sure what it is. I think it's a collateral. Denny, Denny, that's that big long that we did today. Remember you have helped me attach it or um, the OP, that big long link yeah. it's supposed to get to. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot what it was called. It's OPCS. I think it's Ohio, Ohio Public, Public Collateral. Collateral. Co yeah, Ohio Public Collateral. Something. I didn't know what that was about. I was hoping somebody was. I don't have to worry about it. Not right now. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's just something that's an annual thing, but I don't think we do really do anything about it. It's not something. Um, does any member of the public have anything to add to the agenda? Are we going to record who's here in our minutes? Um, we didn't mention that, right? Um, we have. And Scott, we have, I would like. Scott Fife. And Kate LeVacant and um, Adriana Martinez Smiley. Ar Ar Adriana Ma Martinez Smiley mm -hmm. of WISO yes. and Jennifer Adams from Miami Township. For, my, for Miami Township. From Miami Township. From Miami Township. From Miami Township and you could be for it. Yeah. yeah. And, and citizens for Green Acres. Yeah. Our illustrious financial officer, fiscal officer here with us tonight. That's great. Margaret Tillman and the three. Three trustees, Cynthia Pauls, and our fire chief, Danny Powell. Um, fire report, Danny, fire department report. Very small one. Good. Um, I know, I mean, that means there's no apartment fires, right? we, Yeah, I know, it means there weren't, a, there weren't a whole lot. It was typical call volume, but 31 EMS calls, uh, actually only three fire-related calls. We did have three EMS mutual aid requests, no fire mutual aid requests. Um, I mentioned to you guys at the, my, at the last meeting that we were transitioning to an asset and checklist management software. Um, that was a new package for us for ESO, and Cassidy has been absolutely busting his backside, and he's it's about 50% set up, so I think I'm I think we'll be ready to roll it out in two weeks, which is amazing, because uh, I figured it was going to take us about two months. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, my injured firefighter with the ACL tear, he is expected to be cleared for light duty in February. Um, so that'll be nice. He's been in, seems to be doing, uh, starting to finally see things with physical therapy so he's starting to get like okay i'm going to be a functioning human being later on so he's uh, doing pretty well so that's good and that's all i got any questions no sir i don't um i think i'll move this little thingy to the new business it's not it's nothing major um, are you referring to the apparatus? Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't, I just for no. reference for that, I haven't, I haven't called it. And I didn't expect you to. But, oh, I'll hope to have that now that we're on it. Um, we went, me and Don went to the Green County Township Christmas party. And one of the speakers was this guy, um, Bob Jones, who has a uh, business, they were, um, Fire Apparatus Service and Repair Incorporated. He gave this very this speech about how the cost of fire fire engines have gone way up, and how much how much do you think they cost? Them? And the answer was a million dollars. And we already knew that, of course. And but he um, emphasized he used to work at the base, and he repaired a lot of their fire engines and fire equipment and big machinery. And then he eventually went into business working with fire departments and keeping their things running and and he's he wants to save town townships money that was his plug and I'm a sucker for a good um, pitch for a business but um, I talked to and they get they have a new place or I don't know how new it is on 42 just south of Xenia are you familiar with that mm -hmm. so anyway Spring Valley actually that's south of Xenia that's true <laughs> but anyway um, Denny's response was, we already have 
a company that does a lot of this, but I mm -hmm. thought, why not check it out? So yeah, um, I'll talk to you. About we it. used him years ago. That's why, I've, uh, and I, I don't know what happened with him at the time if he moved out of the area or what. But it was funny because he had mentioned something about using had, that we had used him before, and then I took me a while, and then I don't know his name, but it was like a long, long, long time ago. But I'll contact him and see where it goes. It doesn't hurt to ask. More competition is good. Okay. Um, cemetery road report. Um, our cemetery, our road supervisor is not here. He's also injured. Um, but can we get a report on um, Dan and how he's doing? Uh, Dan is getting better. Slowly, but getting better. He had a difficult time sleeping last night, but he um, he's had a little better today. He's this had his is, operation. He's doing yeah. Fo this is up to the minute reporting I'm giving. Yeah. Uh, last he night. has a, um, uh, a physician's appointment first part of January, and hopefully gets cleared for physical therapy at that point, and then we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. And if we should, and if it should snow, we are. 100% ready. Cool. Um, Equipment, personnel. Because Brandon. Salt. Salt. We got Brand, salt. Brandon found a few people. Dan found, Dan, Dan found a few. Okay. Um, he, I mean, there are more people than we have equipment, so that's good. I mean, we've only yeah, got two right. trucks. So exactly. we had, I think we basically have four people who, who potentially we could call on. Oh, good. That's awesome. Um, anything else? For, well, we do have something for roads. Mm -hmm. What are those Excel sheets that we got all about? Okay, as you all know, y'all, uh, first of the year we always get a uh, request from the county engineer for um, commitment to road repair for 2024. What roads we want, what roads we want done, what we want done to them, all those sorts of things. Usually, well, that used to be in March, and then it was back in February and January or something like that, and now it was it broken up into two parts. Uh, last Friday, they wanted a commitment that we would uh, participate in the county uh, collective bid package. They didn't need the actual numbers and roads and things yet, but they're going to want those like next Friday. And um, and Dan, Dan is that literally does. next Friday? Yeah. It, it might be close to next Friday. That's crazy. It is crazy. But that's what all the, the sheets are about. So and, does Dan usually fill the Yeah, he usually does all that. And he is prepared to do it again. Okay. Okay, um, but don't we do a tour? We look at Yeah. That might be a little harder to do. It might be not necessary. I, I would say. Um, I've inspected the roads as of, as of yesterday and, of course, before each meeting, so I'm fairly familiar with the condition of them. Um, Brandon, obviously, being out there, he's pretty familiar with the condition of them. And Dan's fairly familiar with the condition of them. And we're all of pretty much like minds that uh, we have done such a good job in the past few years of maintaining and um, repairing township roads that there's very little, really, that's needed this coming year. Cool. The few things that have been put out on the table are to uh, uh, pave Carol Lamont. They have not been addressed uh, in, in quite, they're the oldest probably that haven't, haven't been actually overlaid in uh, recent memory. And uh, North River could probably use a, 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 a seal, of a, a chip coat seal application. Other than that, there really wasn't anything that came to the fore from any of the, of the three of us. Um, so we could, because we're not going to meet again before this requirement, we could agree to ask Dan to put those roads in the collective bid when this. Yeah, is he doing any work? No. Well, then how is he going to do it? He just fills out a form? Yeah. That would count his work. Yeah, that's right. Yes, it would. Take an anything off. I would feel comfortable uh, following what you just said. 
Is that a motion? <laughs> Do we need a motion? I think we need a motion at the very least to ask Dan to do that work and to put those three roads on the list. Carol Lamont for Overlay and North River for Chipsia. I make a motion. I second the motion. Okay. All in I favor? Can we have a roll? I'm in recovery. I'm still trying to get the road straight. Of <laughs> Carol and Lamont, those are two different roads. Yeah, and that that would be for overlay. That's for overlay. Okay. Yeah. North River Road for a chip seal. Mm -hmm. And I know the difference. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to uh, request that Dan go to now the road department uh, employee to prepare the necessary form for the county engineer's commitment request, including Carol and Lamont for overlay and North River Road for Tipsy. Exactly. Um, Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Mucci. Yes. Motion is approved. Anything else for 17? Any roads? Uh, no. Everything's ready for winter. And cemetery, Dan is also not here to give the cemetery report. Um, I don't know that there's much to say. I know you've been a the, busy little bee. The answer. interim sexton's report, that would be me. <laughs> oh, you're the interim sexton. Oh yeah, you were. You were yeah, um, mm -hmm. well, probably not my most favorite job, but I'm plugging along at it. So we, you're meeting with people? Yeah, I wow. sold a few graves, we buried a few people, We've had lots of phone calls. Okay, wow. Um, Thank you. And I don't think I've let anything slip under the into the cracks or miss the correct lock number for somebody. Right, that's good. Okay. okay. Um, any so anything else for the cemetery? Um, Fiscal officer's report. We have no, a resolution. We've got a resolution. At the end of the year, wrap it up kind of thing. Do you want to read all these here? I, mean, I, can, I can kind of summarize without saying all the numbers. How about this? Where is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township? Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. The general fund, I increased medical and hospitalization by $1,395. In the gas tax fund, I increased salaries by 2,910. Social Security by $12.09. Medical and hospitalization by $5. Electricity by 116. And operating supplies by $644. In the road and bridge fund, I increased garbage and trash removal by $126. And repairs and maintenance by $1,000. Cemetery fund contracted services was increased by $4,686. Fire fund, Social Security was increased by $79.03. Medicare was increased by $310.06. OPNF, which is Ohio Police and Fire Pension, was increased by $2,800.43. And salaries was increased by $19,000. And that's got us through to the end of the year. I move we approve resolution 2023-48. I second that. Any further discussion? Not I. Not I either. Move, please. Mr. Newman, second to you adopt resolution 2023-48, amendment of permanent appropriations as enumerated by the fiscal officer. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mister. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Meyer. Yes. Resolution is adopted. Um, um, it looks like more, but it, we don't have to talk about all this. Um, I th do, you, do you need any help from us? It's a training of the new fiscal officer. You and Gina just going to work it out? Oh, definitely. I mean, I I have not invited her necessarily to be here at this time of year because it's yeah. it's mayhem. And it's, you know, it's hard for her to step into something when she's not had any experience at all. Yeah. Um, but, um, but I, you know, I'm looking towards maybe in uh, February, if things settle down just a titch, then I can get her in here and we can start to do some routine stuff 
you know, watch her pay the bills and do some payroll and stuff just to get her feet wet. Um, cut that kind of stuff, but this okay. end of the year, beginning of the new year is not something that, that you know, it's, it's, that's Remind, down the road Remind us she, when she takes office. Pardon? She will take office April, April 1st. Yeah. April Fool's Day. February, yeah. March. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I want to get her accustomed to the, the routine, yeah. the daily, you know, week stuff, that, or you know, the weekly yeah. stuff that we do, the, the the basics, right? But yeah, and then she could do some training with UAN. Well, she's going to go to a conference, I believe, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and UAN is a godsend <laughs> to to me. Mm -hmm. Has been over the years, and they can I call them anytime time today, and. Um, you know, to get whatever help they need, even, no matter if it's something small or something big, they're there for you, and, and that's a super big help. And then this next one, people had asked, um, inquired at a meeting, no formal public information request was made, but um, some people inquired about how much we have spent on legal fees for um, solar, um, our, our lease loan specifically, for solar, and we don't have that number yet, but Margaret's gonna get it for us, and um, it wasn't officially publicly requested, so we're not late, so. But if y'all wanna do a public request, you could. Um, temporary appropriations. Need to adopt those. I would we adopt temporary appropriations as presented. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, Wait a minute, didn't we just vote on one thing? Well, that way, that was. I haven't seen the temporary appropriation. Uh, I, I thought I, I, what I what I referred to was. Oh, out of the place. Mm -hmm. Why are we adopting them? This is just a report. That is the temporary appropriations for 2024. Yes, yeah, so it's 2024. Yeah. Oh, January so 3rd. Just starting started. January 3rd. Why are you? Rec may I ask why you recommend we adopt them if we have not studied them yet? Um, no. I don't intend to take the time to go over every single line and, and balance out whether we like it or not. There is the cursory review is there seems to be enough money to fund the fire salary benefits for the first three months, and the rest of it will. Well, pull so we well. If I may interject, um, the way that I create these is um, basically I look at. Um, the year-end report of expenses on all these appropriation lines, right? How much we spent in salaries for the year, how much we spent on each item for the entire year, which is wrapped up today. And then I basically divide it by four, and you just kind of come up with a number for the first quarter of your expenses. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to cover us for the first three months. Correct. So yeah, where does the money for the the, the, the fire Yeah, good question, come from? because that's where that's one of the reasons why I called UAN today is because like there's. There's no really any money there to, to, um, to you know, like all the other funds, I was able to appropriate temporarily with fund, with money that was already in those funds that hadn't been expended, except for the fire fund was, didn't. So the recommendation was to basically, um, you, um, you go ahead and use your budget numbers from 2023, the beginning of the year, <coughs> And inject them, you know, your budget for that year, and you put it, just put it in the system. And then you just kind of, um, and then you use that to create the appropriations, because you have to have the appropriations. But and they're not set in stone. And then um, so in January, um, there may be a need to um, move some money from the general fund to the fire fund so that we can pay salaries and get by until we get our first property tax settlement. Or, you know, like we did last year, we we asked for an advance from the county auditor's office for the fire fund to pay. But I created a report, yeah. okay, um, just, but, they're, they're but just these numbers. are not set, these they're, are not set. They're numbers, but we don't know where the money's coming from. Well, it's, the, it's, it's like last year. We did, it's the same, it's basically the same situation okay. as last um, year. There wasn't enough cash. So there's not enough cash in the fire fund to cover the appropriations in this report. Yeah, I get that. So, okay. Well, I'm comfortable with voting for it, but I only saw this 15 minutes ago. Right. Well, you, like I said, that, my calculations mm -hmm. wasn't very um, complicated. Complicated is just 
and this take your take your your NP, you know expense on that approach of iron and divide by four. Now you got your first quarter. Um, I feel kind of comfortable with the whole process um, as far as. Um, Making careful this that we can't make now, but making careful decisions. I didn't think we were going to borrow from the general fund. I thought we had appropriated ARPA money. Um, it, I'd be very disappointed if we had to borrow from the um, general fund. Uh, I thought we had ninety thousand dollars left that would get us through maybe three more pay payrolls, and then I don't know, I don't know what um, kind of figures you're looking at, but it was more than just payroll. Expenses. I don't know where you got that money, that dollar amount. So, what, at what point do we decide how we're going to pay for this? Well, when we're um, faced with going into a negative balance in any particular fund, and then we'll have to have a, a temporary preparation. Where we take it from somewhere, yeah. and then we take it on the fly. Like, we talked about this at our last meeting, um, where we went over these numbers, and you know, there's again, I haven't had a chance to look at the latest numbers, but there was roughly fifty thousand dollars of unexpended funds mm -hmm. that were appropriated in '23 that could be consolidated into salaries into 2024 temporary corporations. Also, there's approximately a, um, was it maybe around 100,000 in the EMS billing fund that's, okay. that's unappropriated um, or unused, appropriated unused, but also in a cash, I believe a cash balance situation, 2281. See, in EMS, there's $206,000 in there now. So we would only, I mean, the temporary appropriations for that fund for the first three months is 2281 is um, $85,000. So the, the difference between 85 and 206 could instantly be moved into 2191 for salaries. Well, or what we could do is just take salaries, pay salaries out of EMS. Uh, I, I would like to keep the salaries out of one line. It makes it so much easier to say there's $125,000 in there and we need 39000 on paper and blah, blah, blah. I'm not, sure that, I'm not sure that we can transfer money from EMS billing to, can we have to, to fire? Can you do that within those two funds? I believe so. I think we've done that. I think we maybe we did. There was a time we were paying salaries out of 2281 mm -hmm. because of the fire funds. Because we could not move it forward. Could, well, I mean, you okay. can't move. You can't move levy money out of any fund. Okay, I'm, but I'm, it's okay. preaching the choir. I right, like, yeah, like like the but, fire. But this is but, just plain money, money. It just it's you know it's fees and permits, and I believe we could use that anywhere, not in general fund, but I mean within. Yeah. Yeah, well. Appropriate so. funds. Okay. I mean, obviously, they'd probably check that, but. Yeah, sure. Having a motion and a second and no further discussion. May we vote? Is there a resolution number on this? How, what, are, what are we titling this, please? Yeah, we can call a resolution if you would like. I, mean, I, I don't, I'm we can't asking. call it. Well, we can call it 49. Do we get it? Do we just Generally, on financial matters, you should have a resolution. Resolution 2023-49. There it is. Adoption permanent appropriations, 2024. No, temporary appropriations. Or excuse me, temporary. temporary. Has been so did you make that? Do we have do we have a motion? Can you just do that? Well, Marilyn made it as a motion, and if she wants to make it as a resolution, not. I withdraw my motion. Is that what I did? Sure. And we can we can have a resolution without a resolution. Okay. <laughs> we can have a resolution. We weren't going to make one. Oh, you mean the piece of paper what, what? that says resolution was on there? There will be one. Yeah, that's 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 pretty easy. All right. right. Go ahead. I'll second. I didn't. That, I'm that, sorry. Who that, that on the floor? Okay. I will. I will move. We adopt. Thank you. Resolution 23, 2023-49. Um, 
adoption of temporary appropriations 2024. I'll second that. No. I was confused. <laughs> I got it. I needed clarification. So move and second to adopt resolution 2023-49, temporary appropriations for 2024. Mr. Moocher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Resolution is adopted. Um, anything else for the fiscal officer? It does not. It does. Okay. Yeah. And there's only an inspector's report, which is all, usually only the first month, meeting of the month. Um, obviously, one of the news is that um, Denise started this week. She came out swinging and is moving right along. Uh, would you give a little more detail? Denise Swinger is our interim. Who is a swinger? De she's not. I, I, don't I thought you said Denny. Did you say Denny? Denise Swinger is our new. Um, Zoning inspector, and she she came out swinging. Right. I, I didn't intend that pun, but she was on it every day this week almost, and mm -hmm. um, has already started meeting with um, individuals and educating herself on um, how township zoning works. So it's great. And um, and, and she's not expected to be permanent. Right, she's interim. So the other things I have for zoning, Don, you had mentioned, you asked put on the agenda, extension of, a, of the expired six month moratorium on small solar for the and, entire township. And as I've looked into it, I think it's kind of moot because any <coughs> solar is, would, would have to be going for a, uh, A variance anyway so well that's something I'm very not clear on and I've, um, I've talked with Deandra at regional planning this weekend and I talked with our zoning inspector um, Chris could you talk a little about about the pros and cons of having a six-month moratorium continued I mean, is it, is it true when Esther is saying it's kind of a moot point? If somebody's going to challenge it, they're going to challenge it, or what would? Well, they, they, if there was a moratorium, they could not challenge it. Because it's, so, it's, it's a... If there's a moratorium... Well, it's, it's going to have to go to BZA regardless, at, 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 under our current zoning resolution. That's correct. It would. I don't understand what you guys are saying. But the moratorium intended to give the Zoning Commission a little breathing room to consider whether they want to adopt any resolution or any regulations. And if they did, what would they look like? As so, opposed to just I, I mean, I am, going into a BZA hearing. I am for uh, another six months but as I look, looked around, checked out, it's, it's kind of, it makes no difference. That is, when we say it's a moratorium, we can't say, uh, I mean, were we gonna have a moratorium on uh, variances for concerts or comedy? That still would have been able to challenge that and go to BZA. But those are existing on the book regulations that someone would apply for and get turned down and then go to the BZA. This is a this is a new a new sheet of paper. I mean there there are no regulations to uh, apply for or to be turned down for. So a real world hypothetical situation a developer came to Xenia and wanted, Samsung wanted to put a 25 megawatt development on someone's farm. I'm not sure how to do it, but if they did that here, if we didn't have a moratorium, it was they approved. Did, oh, it was. Oh. If, um, if we did that, if that happened here, while we didn't, while we were still writing our rules and we didn't have a moratorium, what would, what would, what is the scenario? They come here that some farmer says, I was just offered 
to lease my land to Samsung, 25 megawatts, and we don't have a moratorium and we don't have a regs written, what happens? You have to wait. No, you go to BZA. So by, by really that logic, the moratorium, the two-year moratorium on the county level is just a moot point. No, that has teeth in it because of the Senate Bill 52. Um, True. Well, uh, it's not a permitted use, it's not a conditional use, it does, it's not a use at all, so um, Denise Swinger thought they wouldn't be able to do it at all, and <coughs> Deandra thought they could go through the BZA, but I don't know which one. Well, so it's not I, am, I am happy to, to go ahead and bring a resolution for a moratorium at our, our next meeting, uh, although the research I have done said that it was unnecessary. And it, it's more symbolic than anything else. Well, I think we should know exactly what the, the, what the scenario is. I mean, we could, the easy thing would be just do it, because then we have it. But I am, um, I, when you first brought it up, I think Jennifer and you first brought it up about a month or so ago, I wasn't, I didn't feel, although we, it wasn't brought up formally, I, I didn't feel in favor of it because last year sometime, or early this year, our, our, our zoning inspector reported what he thought res, regulation should look like in the township. He reported and um, and we decided to we decided to put a six month moratorium and give our bees, our zoning commission chance to work on it. Um, I said at the time when we put the six month moratorium that I hoped I hoped we could get public input. That's not an easy thing to do. I attempted. It's not their fault. It's not really anybody's fault that the public didn't engage. But the latest reports of what they've come up with matches pretty much verbatim what our zoning inspector had proposed from the beginning of the process. Since then, the, the public has organized itself and has asked for participation in the process, and that hasn't come to the zoning commission yet. So if we, if we extend a six-month moratorium, I, I, would, I would like to do it after tomorrow in my zoning commission meeting to see if there's a plan of what exactly we're going to be doing during that six months. Are we going to, are we going to create a public process or not? So what, what I hear you saying, quite apart from my legal argument, is that there's a symbolism in this where it was, this would be helping uh, generate public discussion and bring people to the zoning commission meetings and, and have a more of a collaborative discussion. Yeah, well, I'd say more than symbolism. I'd like it to actually happen if it can. Um, I well, guess... It would happen because we're giving it more publicity. That may be a result. I don't think of symbolism as dismissive at all. Um, I guess I wanted to, uh, it comes down to what are we giving us six, ourselves six months to do? And I think that will be clearer after tomorrow's meeting. That is tomorrow's meeting of the Zoning the Commission. Zoning Commission. And see. Here in this room at seven o'clock. Right. And then it can be revisited at our next meeting, and if, if a developer should, should um, apply to the BZA, or whatever, and it, what, it, between now and New Year's, I, it's a doubtful that anything's, we're going to be facing anything. And it sounds like we don't really know definitively what would happen if we didn't have a moratorium, because I'm getting conflicting reports. Does that, does that sound reasonable? I'm perfectly willing to put it off till next meeting. Does the public have anything to say, Jennifer? Or? Any 
any comments? I'd like to say that it does sound like it's unclear what the effect of the moratorium would be that you've gotten contradictory opinion. And it would be really nice to have clarity on that before you make your decision. It's yeah. my hope also to have good public input on the development of zoning regulation. It, if we can do moratoriums, I could see uh, doing seasonal moratoriums on events. That's another matter. Yeah. But that's a very good point. Yes, case. Um, I'm not sure that moratoriums have have status really, but um, I, my understanding is they don't. I think it, it has to do if there are already permitted or conditional uses or something that exists, and if, and if there are. Can we do a moratorium on conditional use or on variance? I don't believe so. I don't think we can do a moratorium on our zoning code. Uh, oh. So let's uh, pay attention to tomorrow night's meeting and talk about this and get an on answer, January 3rd. A definitive answer. Yeah. Thank you. About the scenarios. Okay. Um, and Chris? I would think Jen Huber could provide that answer. I think so too. Mm -hmm. And our, our prosecuting attorney, our prosecutor's office attorney, is ill and unavailable. Um, yeah, I tried to talk to her today. Um, and Chris, did you want to bring up this next one? Or me? You had suggested a survey of sorts. Yeah. Um, we're looking for public input. I mean, that seems to be the general consensus we're looking for public input. Comprehensive plan states that our township is prime, predominantly agricultural based and is committed to the, maintaining our agricultural base. If we're looking to amend, if we're looking to ask, the, if we're looking to hope that the Planning Commission would revisit all or part of the comprehensive plan for amending it to allow whatever, solar, wind, nuclear, whatever. Um, I think it is 100% incumbent upon this board to try and get as much information from the people that this would affect. Not the people in the village, not the people in the county, not the people in the state, the people whose land would be changed from agriculture, as stated in the comprehensive plan, to an entirely different land use. Not much different than, mm -hmm. I don't know, I can't think right this second. But, uh, you know, housing developments for that matter. You know, somebody says, you know, we really need, you know, there's all this high tech coming on the east side. We need to change our zoning code so we can have, you know, apartments and, and, Walmarts and whatever, so all these people will come and stay in Miami Township and you know raise our tax base and make us a better place to live. Is that going to happen without a change in the comprehensive plan? Uh, I certainly hope not. I wish we had control of the comprehensive plan, but we don't. But in order to get the comprehensive plan amended, the zoning commission has to have input. Public, yes, but not every landowner in Miami Township is going to come to the Zoning Commission and give their opinion as to how they'd like to have their land uh, used, either agriculture or not. I don't know of another way other than a good old survey. You know? Hire somebody to write this survey that you know we want, and, and it can be as short as it says, do you own agricultural land in Miami Township? Yes, no. How much do you own, or how much do you farm? Yes, no. What are your feelings of using that land as a solar farm as opposed to agriculture? That's the survey. Well, why do you want to only survey landowners? I want to survey farmers. These are the people who, who, who participate in the agricultural 
industry in Miami Township, which the comprehensive plan says that we support. We are an agricultural township. Well, that's your your, your presumption is that. I'm not your, presuming anything. Your presumption is that we would have to change the designation of, of agri the designation of the the, um, the category agriculture is zoned agricultural. That to put any commercial solar or any kind of solar there, we'd have to change the designation from agriculture to something else. You'd have to do something, and that, that would be what the zoning commission would do. That's not at this board level. But we wouldn't necessarily have to change what it from agriculture to public zone. opinion. Yeah, but I'm saying, why only landowners? <clears throat> what, what else is there? What, what else is there? Except landowners. This oh, so it includes people who live in residence. Would there be would there be a solar farm on their property? Would they be taking uh, beans and corn off of their property to put solar on? So we, the comprehensive land, the comprehensive plan comes from the people, mm -hmm. but the only people we're going to get input on is landowners. Oh, wait, wait a minute, you guys are arguing about the detail of a survey. First of all, do we want a survey? I mean, we could have a survey that identifies. Uh, landowners, identifies active farmers, identifies people who live in the unincorporated areas and, and that they're not farmers or landowners. We can have a, a much fuller thing, but first let's talk about sure. do we want to survey or not. Then we can talk about detail of who. I think we need a survey. I think we need a survey. I like the idea. And all right, let's explore that. But it's really important because I I happen to believe every category, including villagers, should be included. And this is a conversation I had with Deandra this week. And, and she says we're, we're unusual because we're a township and we the villagers have their own zoning um, and the unincorporated people have their own zoning. And, but we're all a township and it affects all of us in the village pays for a lot. The village funds us, and I'll get to you in a second. Um, that sounds like the cart driving the horse. Or, is that the right analogy? I don't think that doesn't sound exactly right. You mean what you're getting at is the village having too much, um, the villagers having too much weight, weight, weight. I don't think they've got, you know, I don't think they've got as much um, stake in this process as the people who are actually farming the land, who are being asked, and they're potentially given the right. No one's taking, as Lamar Spracklin so eloquently pointed out, no one's taking his personal property. I mean, they, he says we are, but I'm saying we are not taking his personal property rights. Away. We are following the process, the process that's in place to permit a large scale solar, wind, whatever, nuclear, it doesn't have to be one single thing, on agricultural land in Miami Township. Well, now you now you just confused me again because I you just said large scale. Yeah. A and our I thought our we were talking about small scale. Small scale. Because we don't permit, we don't. The state decides the large scale. Although there, as long as we're as doing this, as long as we're doing a um, survey, why not? As an intervener in that process, if we've got a comprehensive plan that says we accept or are we um, encourage large scale solar on our agricultural land, we certainly are not going to be an intervener uh, against a, a solar farm. We're going to be an intervener for a solar farm. But right now, because we don't, that's correct. I argue for being an intervener. Yeah, but the, um, the, I don't see the need to talk about the details of a survey in I our don't. business meeting. But I think the character of survey is relevant. What's um, the purpose of the survey? I mean, I'm for a survey, and I think to have a general description of it, and do we. Um, I How feel far like we have fundamental different understandings of what the survey's purpose is. Pardon? I think we're having a fundamental difference of understanding what the survey's purpose is mm -hmm. and, and who will be represented by it. So 
I do feel comfortable discussing it because I, you now you're saying it's to, to determine our, interve our intervener status, and and it was my understanding that it's to help with our zoning regulation. One would follow the other. They're two different things. If the comprehensive plan says, as a result of public input and, and change by the zoning commission, the comprehensive plan says, you know, uh, we support solar farms in Miami Township agricultural land, then we would not be an intervener against solar in Miami Township. Right. Um, or at least I would not vote for being an intervener. So the inclusivity of who, who will be surveying? Or, or, let me ask you this question. What is a farmer? Someone who grows crops and sells them. Is a farmer somebody who owns 500 acres but somebody else farms it? it, it I'm looking for a, a property owner and what is being done with this property. So we're going to let the, I, I just let. If someone else is farming it, it's, it's a business relationship, but it's still, the bottom line is the, the property owner determines the land use of his property under yeah. conditions set forth by zoning. The idea of informing our policy based on large landowners survey is, sounds like it's straight out of the 1800s to me. I don't know why we wouldn't. It sounds like it's 100% what our zoning commission is in, in place to do. Oh, I'm sorry, Jennifer. So what is the, I, I need help understanding. Um, what is the township's, the trustee's role and, and the zoning commission's role when it comes to supporting the incorporated areas of the township versus the unincorporated? So what is your obligation to the citizens of the incorporated area versus the citizens in the unincorporated area of the township? What is your responsibility? How does your responsibility change between the different parties? Other than providing fire and EMS service, there really is no obligation for Miami Township to the village of Yellow Springs. Or village of Clifton. Or village of Clifton. Okay. So the two the two incorporated areas we have are Yellow Springs, the village of Yellow Springs, and the village of Clifton. Mm -hmm. Clifton village. Mm -hmm. And your only obligation to them is fire and EMS yes. mm -hmm. okay. And 50 years ago, this, well, it doesn't matter what happened 50 years ago. Well, it ha did happen 50 years ago that. Uh, <coughs> First of all, all the members of the zoning commission must be living in the unincorporated areas. And our zoning is only of the unincorporated areas. Uh, citizens in the unincorporated areas can petition to have a referendum uh, overturning the zoning we call it zoning regulation, but mm -hmm. others would call it the zoning code. Um, and 50 years ago, there was a, a referendum to overturn that's the minimum the, lot size. That's the citizens of the unincorporated? Unincorporated, area? yeah. Okay. So as, as you proposed it, the people we would ask would be large landowners, not necessarily the people who farm them. It would be. Every resident of the unincorporated area of Miami Township. Well, I would want in that, I would also want people to identify in, are you active farmer, are you a three acre? Uh, that's what I started with it. Home, you know, homeowner, whatever. I but still, I would, I would go to everybody. Yeah. About a thousand people. Because it's for a thousand. Yeah, those yeah, about 500 households. The people who are not actively agriculturally based would still be affected if there was a solar farm next to them or mm -hmm. down the street or whatever. I mean, their voice is important also. 
but the, the voice of the people who are actually going to have this land converted from a use that we support primarily in our conference plan to but another use, I think that might be one step above it. What's that likely to cost us? Um, fair amount. I mean, the, I would think the McKee Association worked with a group at Wright State, a much larger project than the survey, I think, but it, for the cost of living mm -hmm. uh, study, uh, and that was like fifteen thousand um, dollars. But a survey is different than just studying other people's documents. Um, so I don't know how much. Yeah, but the, the time involved in study other people's documents is right. substantially no. more than. Yeah, I'm guessing it would be less than making a stamp. Thousand, but yeah. I don't know. Anyone I, in the room ever? I would be happy. To recently do. paid for service. <laughs> I would be happy to you make as some, much as you want. <laughs> some some calls specifically to our regional planning director, mm -hmm. uh, who I would think would be on top of that sort of um, base of business and then to do this. We can get go into the weeds about the questions, and I mean they would. I assume that we, we would be given a draft. Uh, what the questions would be, and oh, sure. we can go over it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it would be so, driven. So this kind of discussion that we're having now, we, we, could, we would have again. Oh, yeah. I, I would expect we would have 100% control of the questions in the survey. Um, could I request that when you do ask the questions about solar and wind, or whatever you're asking about, that it's more in-depth than, than the example that you gave today, because um, there are many levels of what solar looks like, and even at the zoning commission meetings, they're they're beginning to have those conversations about the different types of solar that are possible and what could potentially be a good thing and, and what may not. Mm -hmm. And it, it ranges all the way from utility scale industrial when we're talking about you know over one megawatt to to small scale operations that. Um, you know, are used to operate the farm itself. So mm -hmm. it, it is a range and you have people who are, who agree with one, the, you know, the solar to operate your farm, but maybe not the extreme of, yeah. of the other. So would it, yeah. it would span that. I, I would envision that, sure. That, has, that is the challenge is to help under pe people understand. Yeah. Everybody has a different image of what they think solar is. And it'd yes. be, it's going to be a real challenge to help other people understand what the different possibilities, what the different scenarios would be, because I guess that's why we paid them the bucks to figure it out. But I, I imagine we'd have to be involved with them because now we've been steeped in this for the last two or three years and mm -hmm. they haven't. So right. I've also been given a couple of different names of people, the survey people, so. Okay. Oh, you've already got names of survey people. No, I, I mean, I don't remember, but I've been, people have been saying, you should all call this, this person. And I'm like, okay, well, we're not there yet, but. Um, all right, public, any, anything else? Um, at the end, I, I had, me and Deanda talked about whether villagers should be, um, I, I gave her a hypothetical scenario. I, 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 think no, she thought, I think she thought yes, but when you were first saying Deandra, I thought you were talking about an attorney. Who are you? Who's Deandra? Um, I'm sorry, no, I'm Rachel of um, Green County. Green County Regional Plan. Plan. Green Regional Plan. Okay, the director. Um, I, I would just say I uh, uh, sympathize with Chris's point that who's going to be affected most are people in the unincorporated area. And I think about the idea of weeds. The people who own the land, if you're considering opinion, they are affected the most. Maybe their opinion is weighted the most. The people who uh, live uh, uh, in the unincorporated area in houses but aren't farmers, which um, we were looking at the number of lots there. I guess there's more lots like that. Of course, they're smaller mm -hmm. than there are of the farms. Sure. So there's more people like that, um, but they're not as directly affected. And then villagers uh, were 
less affected except in the idea of we are part of the township and how do we, what do we think? It's, it, I think, possibly a useful thing to survey us, but I would give us a less weight than the people who own houses, and I give them less weight than the farmers. Mm -hmm. So that's my commentary. Jennifer, how do you feel about having less weight than the large landowners? Um, well, so I don't own as much acreage as some of the other farmers over there, but I do farm my property, so oh, I, I don't know what that category I'm following. Okay. Um, I, I thought you were, I didn't know you had to. And to, to consider, it's a, it's a tricky question, right, because um, while the farmers may be impacted, the, the people who own the acreage or even the people who um, actually work the land can be affected. Um, the the person that lives right in the middle of all of that, you could argue would be more greatly affected, right? It just depends on the way, there are a lot of different ways to look at it because the farmer, the person who owns the land may live in Columbus and, and not truly be affected day yep. to day, mm -hmm. whereas the person who actually lives right in the middle of a project like that can be affected day and night on their way to work, on their way home from work, while they're at home. So it depends. There are a lot of different ways to look at it. There really are. Sounds like a Well, I like the idea of a survey, but then the devil is in the details. Of course. So what would be our next step on that? Uh, do a little investigation, uh, come back to our next meeting, and report yeah who who's doing this work over Christmas well I I I'll, I'll do research and I'll um I'm do, gonna do a lot of thinking and, and and talking with people about the types of questions we need um, as, I, as president of the Green County <laughs> Regional Planning <laughs> Commission um, I'd be happy to discuss with my executive dis uh, director so it sounded like both of you would do some work and I won't have to worry about it. That's hilarious. Um, Next one is business. Okay. <laughs> Next sort of business. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, there's one other thing with zoning. Um, a zoning commission member is going to be in Florida until March and would like to participate in the discussions. And he's so far that he's going to dial in on somebody's phone. He asked if we could put them, either record them or put, he asked for Zoom. I don't know, um, I, not rocket science, but we don't, we've never done that. Greg Schrader, uh, can I say that? Greg Schrader requested that. Um, I said possibly we could film it and have it up the next day. Is that good enough? Um, Steve Weird had once asked if those could be videoed. We said we didn't have our own camera, we have our own now. I don't know what is our obligation to um, accommodate a zoning commission member or is that zoning room? commission members capable of Zoom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think that I thought that that was no longer an option now post COVID. Yeah, it, he, I, I'm going to have to let him know he can't participate. He can't. He be can't counted. vote. He can't be counted okay. as a. Okay. He really can't. But the you know the development corporation used when their monthly meetings in this room. They used to use Zoom. Now they don't. But you know Kevin Stokes would come in and mm -hmm. set up a 360. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so yeah. Do yeah. we have okay. the do we have that equipment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do we have three hundred. It would be audio only, it wouldn't be video. But, mm -hmm. but it, it could well, be audio. You're meeting with Kevin anyway, are you? You could ask him about borrowing this equipment. He's borrowing from his college. Oh yeah. It's owl, owl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well You don't have an owl. My, my, my thing is, like, is this up to the zoning, is this up to us, or is this up to the zoning commission to do that if that's what their members want? I don't know. Um, well, if we, if we can, in, at a practical level, if we can help them, 
technically, but it would be nice. It's tomorrow, okay. It doesn't have to happen by tomorrow night, okay. Um, and how do we feel, uh, we had made the decision not to video the zoning, the zoning commission meetings. Does anybody have a strong feeling on whether or not we should start broadcasting those? Um, given okay. the territory okay. that we're moving into, it might be beneficial for the public. For the public. Okay, I'll talk to them. You know, if, if there was a strong opposition within the commission, yeah, I'd be a little surprised, but I would defer to, at first, I would defer to their oh, I'll to reference. But okay, I'll check with them. Um, I have a question. Um, how do you feel about the zoning commission meetings would not be? as opposed to these meetings? Um, they're a subset of us. Um, honestly, historically, it's been um, a, a pretty dull, um, we've, not a lot's been going on in this township for a good number of many years. And uh, there wasn't, there isn't much public interest. In fact, we've often had to really, really search for commission members. and. It's just that there's a lot of changes happening now, and so there's increased interest. There's not really been the interest, and we were we're just kind of the rural country cousins of the cities, and um, we're not as don't have as much public involvement. So I think if we're just getting to the point where people are starting to to ask for that information. Yeah. Although even our uh, trustee meetings. When I look at YouTube, how many viewings? Yeah, 10, yeah. 15, 20. Yeah, not very many, but that's more than nothing. Five of those are me. <laughs> now, there may be folks watching now that. Uh, well, 10 people is like 1% of the time. But also, it's not a huge effort. Yes. We, it just became a routine. It's, yeah. Uh, in principle, I think it's a good idea, but. Huge. See what their reaction is. Um, standing committees. Uh, if we're done with zoning, anything else for zoning? Um, MBRPC. Um, it was all about their new when they got. Um, I'm reporting for that. Green County Regional Planning. Chris we did not meet that month. Okay. We'll meet this month. Don, what's going on at the Clifton Union Cemetery? Uh, one of our three members has serious health problems and we haven't met in over six months. Okay. YS Development Corporation? Uh, Anything important? Oh, sort of piggybacking on the solar. Um, there will be a, I mentioned this before, but YSDC has received a grant for a very preliminary exploration of so-called community solar, where there is, uh, where homeowners would participate in off-site solar, uh, sort of sort of like a co-op. Um, when I first heard the description, I thought it was just small-scale solar, but this is a narrower model um, where the uh, citizens participating at, I don't know whether it be 10 acres, 30 acres, uh, <coughs> and they're in line uh, that could then be, there could be a second grant and then subsidy for the actual uh, construction. Uh, and there's, I don't have the date, but in the middle of January, I mean, the date's been set, but I don't have it, sorry. Uh, the middle of January, there'll be another public meeting asking for comment and input. Uh, and that includes Yellow Springs and all of the township. Uh, 
besides solar, what's going on? That one person they were talking about. Um, well, I was there, but yeah. visiting different of uh, the um, new businesses that are moving in the area and giving them a page or something. What's what's up? Yeah, Chris made reference to the different high tech companies that are uh, not coming into Green County, but nearby, okay. and the anticipated. A uh, dramatic increase in uh, supply companies and uh, housing. I think Cedarville is projecting a 300 house uh, development as a result of mm -hmm. what's planned in Fayette County. Uh, what YSD sees, that is what Yellow Springs Village and the Development Corporation are doing is participating in the regional events and trying to get up to speed in terms of providing information about Yellow Springs opportunities, available commercial land, uh, and new housing opportunities here. Okay. Uh, uh, Environmental Commission, I have no report. Green County Township Association, we had our Christmas party, the food was good, and um, a good time was had by all. And the <coughs> National Burial Committee has not met. Yeah, I would prefer that we not have acronyms like GFNB. <laughs> that we say natural burial. Okay. Uh, <coughs> cool. Because I keep forgetting what you're talking about. <laughs> the Glen Forest Natural Burial Committee. Okay. I and I don't have any new business since we kind of handled it earlier. Or old business that leaves us to adjourn. I Did we ask right? earlier if there was if the public wanted to? Yes. Anyone in the public had an item to bring up? Yes. Did you do? You did. Yes. I'll just, uh, given the opportunity, yes, please. Um, uh, I've been reading lately that um, more agricultural prime farmland is being lost to uh, housing developments. And of course, when you put housing developments on prime farmland, it is not recoverable. There is some debate about whether or not it's recoverable after solar. My belief is that it is easily recoverable. Uh, but when you put housing on it, it's 100% is not. So I just wonder if the township has a role to play in being careful about whatever regulations would govern uh, housing development on crack farmlands. Well, yes, we do. Uh, there are regulations in place. Uh, you simply have to have three acres of land and 300 feet of road frontage in order to put a home on, home site on. Uh, and you can put roads, if you had 100 acres, you could put, you know, you could, you could build roads in, you know, in the 100 acres and plot out every 300 feet and three acres for, for home sites. Uh, or you could ask to have it uh, put in a PV where you could plan new development, plan new development, where you could it's just like every other PUD, you know, and have higher density here and lower density over here and mixed use, um, or you could ask to have it rezoned to a higher density from agricultural uh, to an R1B um, if you could be able to provide uh, on-site uh, water and sewer to the to the uh, project that you were thinking of. In a practical term with the way our comprehensive plan is written and this is very similar to you know the, the solar question you know where agriculture and our zoning commission uh, has never been um, advocating housing developments in, in the township uh, and i think it would be a, a, a very steep hill for a developer to climb to to get a project like that put together. To do it on three acres and 300 feet with the price of uh, acreage 
uh, out there. I, I don't. I really don't see the ability of, of any more than just whatever is on the existing road frontage that you know that's permitted. Um, you know, Wilberforce Clifton Road. If there's an empty 300 feet, somebody could build a house. They could build one house. You don't feel it's a significant risk to farmland loss. No, because we're not promoting it. We're not. We're not a. We're not a growth-oriented township. Our comprehensive plan does not, if it got changed, you know, like everything else, you know, that, those things could change. But there is no, there is no drive for development through our comprehensive plan down through zoning. Okay, I just heard you earlier talking about big companies and all that and housing coming in. To the, to the east. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's going to affect us that much? Okay, that was my question. Oh, you, know, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I, I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but that's the way our, our zoning is set up okay. for housing. Yeah. All right. So, in other words, if, if there's a road already there, fine, you got three, three acres and 300 foot of frontage. It's economically feasible. But in order to make more which is why you, you know, people say, you see only big houses, everyone's, well, the economic feasibility of a developer putting in roads, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. And developing infrastructure infrastructure yeah. makes it not, and, and I never understood And not I'm, having, I mean, each, each house would need their own septic system. Yeah. And, uh, right. There's uh, no utilities for them, so they can their own well. And their own well, yeah. System. And then a well, lot of areas, is it true that we couldn't prevent it if we, well, like, we couldn't say no subdivisions in, in, in. Not if they, not if they uh, <coughs> comply with the township zoning. Yeah, okay. And our P, plan unit developments, there was, we, our zoning commission redid that section of the code in some in the last two years, and it was very good. They had, um, mm -hmm. for the plan unit development, they had a, 55% uh, green space requirement in every in a public and other and other um, I thought progressive points mm -hmm. in it. So I I think think you're still talking about removing agricultural land from That's agricultural true. production. Even it's good to say yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You you can't do anything 100. percent Yeah. I mean, right. drive the township roads and you'll see house after house after house that's been put up and and. You know, in the last, I drive down Harbison Road, drive down Larkins Road, drive, you know. 30 years? It, but these are all zoning permitted 300 foot, three acre Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I actually agree with you that urban sprawl is a huge problem um, for prime agricultural land. Would it be worthwhile in the survey to ask maybe a few questions about people's opinions uh, about that? Or is that not an area that would go in, you know, that doesn't go well in the survey, would it confuse you? Uh, you're getting ahead of the game. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, of course, you know, well, we should put this in the survey. We should put that in the survey. We need to sure. know about this. Well, yeah. now you've got a three-page survey, you know, that's in, some, in front of somebody. I don't want to fill this thing out. Okay. But it's worth, just, you know, how much of the cost of the survey is having a survey and how much of it is the detail and then would adding other kinds of questions twist the survey or make it fewer people would actually respond. I that's, don't know. That's, the, that's the one driving, you know, I want maximum participation mm -hmm. I, I, mean, I don't know where that that line would be I actually like questions. this because we previously we've been, we've been talking about an overdue of the comprehensive land use plan it wasn't until last week when you suggested amend a section at a time maybe if we could get a good model for a survey that model could be used for other topics as we amend other sections in years to come sure so. hopefully I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a question on the oh. The agenda states the next meeting is Monday, January 3rd, which is not, <laughs> that doesn't work. Wednesday. So is it, is it in fact Wednesday, January 3rd? It is Wednesday, January 3rd. Thank you.
because of the holiday. Okay. I'll second your motion, Madam Chair. We're all I'll, I'll vote yes. 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 First. I also support adjourning. Thank you.